Hey, welcome back to the German Autobahn. End of April 2017, I was heading for a scraping class with Richard King in Denmark to learn and improve my scraping. Um, I have done quite a bit of scraping in the past, but I had the feeling that I had a lot of bad habits and my scraping was going quite slow. So when I had the opportunity, I decided to go for this class. It was a solid 1250 kilometer drive for me, but I was driving on Easter Sunday and Easter Monday, so streets were pretty open and weather was, with the exception of a few heavy rainfalls, quite okay. So driving went perfectly well and finally I arrived in Denmark and the scraping class could begin. So I will show you some footage from the class in the following minutes. So enjoy. Now this is a straight edge. It's not a parallel. So I don't care if if this here, this dimension, and this dimension are the same. We don't care. So what you can do a little trick when you're straight working on something like this is that you tip it in, we call it. We don't touch this down on this end, and we just scrape this end down. And what happens is that uh, as it comes down, this comes down and this touches. Now, as this thing is heavy, <laughs> and he's going back and forth, so you, you could just hit this and leave this alone, it'll be faster to bring the middle in. You could take this side, but I would probably, if I was him, I would scrape all this blue, then I would remember where I was, I scraped it, and I'd come in the other direction and scrape it again. Less walking. Yep, yep. I was, I was thinking, thinking of doing that now. Yeah, and um, like I was trying to say the other day, when we make these things, we just, we do it on a planer, and we turn the head, so it's at 45 degree. We don't get in there with a sign plate and we don't get in there with a with a, a gauge that you set and you take it into your optical comparator. We don't care if it's exactly a 45 where there was somebody on Practical Machinist just recently was talking about he wanted a straight edge with 50 degrees plus or minus like nothing. Well, why? <laughs> well, the the part that this sits in is 50 degrees. Well, you don't, when you scrape a, a machine, you don't scrape the flat and the dovetail at the same time. You scrape both flats first, and then you do dovetails second. So you don't care if this is 50 degrees or 45 degrees or 60 degrees. But there are a couple other manufacturers that I've seen that they have another one over here. So they'll make this a 45 and this a 50. It's just uh, more convenient, because sometimes you can't get in as good. You kind of tell them about how you were doing it and what you discovered. Yeah, and uh, my, bad my aha experience was that I thought when I start, I look, oh, it's not difficult, this one here. <laughs> and I, Wow. Oh, sounds familiar. And it get bigger, bigger holes inside. And I try this one and this one and this one. And my aha experience was, you must pull when 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 you when you hammer it. So and and I saw uh, stain use this one and I tried. And I use my thumb. Yeah, very spring. I used to use my thumb, but yeah. now my thumb got sore. Yeah. So, now so and 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 one thing more, I figured out that if you do like this, you lift it 
when you push it and, and your finger is like a spring. So it's a combination to make three or four things and, and, and it's not so heavy stroke. This one is maybe too uh, heavy to use in, in the, but this one is, this is more dead and this one is, and if you use this one, it will not give the same. Uh, it bounces more, the other's got more mass. Well, that's why I use a dead blow hammer. Yeah, yeah, dead blow hammer is better than this one. Jan did some stress relieving on his 48 inch Kingway straight edge. And for that purpose, he blew it up. He took a photo of the, the bluing then he suspended it on a crane and he hit it with a rawhide mallet a few times, quite heavy, and let it always ring out. This way you take out um, a certain amount of the stresses in the straight edge that could otherwise form um, or lead to deformation when you hit the straight edge slightly during use. So when you release the stresses when you're scraping, um, you're on the safe side later on. After Jan did the stress relieving, he blew up the straight edge again, here cleaning the surface plate very carefully. Always make sure there is no dirt on the blue. Also wiping down the straight edge itself so we don't contaminate the blue on the surface plate. Richard is helping here, giving a hand. And after bluing, it showed that the uh, bluing pattern has moved. That means that the that the stress relieving did something to the straight edge, and it moved slightly, uh, hinging the part and rubbing it good on the blue, and checking the the surface. Here John is scraping on a nice camelback straight edge. And Marcus is working on a uh, on the compound of a Russian lathe. Marcus came all the way up from Australia. Australia. Thorsten is working on the gibbs, prismatic gibbs of a deep draw punch press. He had the gibbs and the ram with him, which was quite an interesting project because uh, Richard could show us a lot of um, alignment tricks on those parts. We did also some work with turkite and here we prepared a piece of steel on um, shaper to glue on the turkite. Niels was working on the compound or on the cross slide of a Schaublin 102 plain lathe which which came out quite nice after, after a few passes. I have my rotary table with me and here I'm scraping the the bottom bearing surface of the rotary ro of the rotary table. Um, I'm very carefully scraping down the areas that I identified as high and deburring the surface with a stone.
straight all the way through in one direction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you might only be taken off <laughs> your step in you know, like a step. And then when you John is work still working on the camelback straight edge and here he is um it takes out the extreme high points that he marked with a with a magic marker. I'm still working on the rotary table. Richard told me to, to very carefully deburr the eccentric oil grooves, otherwise um, they might scratch the, the sliding surface in the housing. Lubing up the rotary table and test fitting after I considered the bearing done. So, <laughs> and I was quite happy how the, the sliding, the, the action of the rotary table was working out. Here I'm using a gauge block and my dial test indicator to check the rotary table um, for parallelism between the bearing surface and top table surface of the rotary table itself. And this came out well below one hundredth of a millimeter all the way around. I'm also tapping the indicator stand lightly with a of a marker to see if there is any tension in my setup. Here I'm using a Biax HM10 Half Moon Flaker uh, on one of the cast iron practice pieces that we scraped before. Uh, to get the hang of the half moon flaking and this machine is quite violent you have to go very fast otherwise the flaking turns out horrible um, and by the amount of chips piling up on the wooden clamp you can see uh, that the half moon flaking is removing quite a lot of material but the result it gives are very nice <laughs> this is the ram of the deep draw punch press Torsen brought with him and they machined the bottom surface square on a milling machine so they could measure and compare the squareness against the granite angle on the surface plate. Here he is roughing down prismatic ways and then we got a lesson from Richard in measuring and aligning prismatic ways. You make the long one the master, okay. but you scrape this first to, uh, to get it prepared for the master. So, because you put this on here and rub it, how do you hinge it? There's no way to hinge it. Mm -hmm. So before you put it together, you use a straight edge. <laughs> to uh, it sticks out a little bit, so you have to have it. Oh, okay. But uh, and when you hold one of these on here, you don't hold it out here. You hold it here, and then you rub it, and then you hinge it. So, so you know that it's not high in the middle. You know that you hinge this, it hinges here and it hinges here. But if you didn't do that, let's say this was high in the middle, and you put this on here, and you'd rub it back and forth, and because you can't hinge it, you wouldn't know it's high in the middle. Because it's rubbing, and it's rubbing, all like that. So, so that's what you got to do with one of these. And then another thing, we got a magnet base, 
maybe uh, that one there. And you put it down close. Now this is not very, it's not flat, but so then you go like this and see how much shake there is. There's no shake, but it wobbles a little bit up here, so you know we could just. See, it's rocking this way. Mm -hmm. So there's a high spot in here somewhere that's making that rock. Mm -hmm. I started to scrape this to match fit it. So you, what you need when you do this, you want to rub it a long, long time to get the shiny or the black. Yeah. Usually when you have uh, bluing on, on cast iron, you don't see shinies. You see blacks. But that's why you got to really rub it a long, long time to polish it up. And then we can do that over here. See, there's nothing there either. And then you go up here. Could be a little longer, but uh, so you'd be checking out here, but it doesn't reach. <clears throat> moving. Oh, that's still five. Fire. I think there is a little bit too much blue on here. So it's probably going to come out very sloppy. So on the last day I had some spare time left and I did a small experiment with a, with a normal straight edge and a camelback straight edge comparing how much they deflect under load. And obviously the, the normal straight edge without any ribbing deflects way more under load. The normal straight edge bends one order of magnitude more than the camelback straight edge. Just goes to show the, the geometry of the camelback is of course superior. So by the end of the fifth day as well also the end of the class I headed home to Germany 1250 kilometers back and I want to say thank you to everybody who made this class possible. Steen for giving his shop to a group of people for Jan who organized the class and for Richard who traveled around the world to, to give away his knowledge. Thank you all.